Hi everyone, well, welcome to the new tutorial video. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to extract data from your model simulation. If you have your model ready, so then how can you uh, perform post uh, processing? So what I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna extract this data using a script that I have written in Python programming language. And using that script, I'll extract the data for the observation locations. And then I'll uh, try to show how to compare this data with the observation data set. Since I have a lot of uh, observation per location, then if I wanna extract one by one using that uh, quick plot, a graphic user interface, and then if I you know, plot this using Excel, so it would take a lot of time. So we don't have that much time and it, it will be like uh, laborious and we don't want that. If, if you can write a script in either in MATLAB or in Python or in R, so that can do that job. So before that, before going to the comparison plot, we have to be able to extract the data set from the simulation, right? So then we can do whatever we wanna do. So that's the hardest part because uh, yeah, it's easy to extract data from any NetCDF file because if you have idea about uh, the format, NetCDF format, it's kind of three dimensional, four dimensional, whatever the dimension is, it's pretty easy to extract this data. But uh, the structure is also NetCDF here in, uh, Delta D, but it is uh, the variable description. It's uh, different, a little bit different than usual NetCDF file. The extension is NetCDF. The way they write the uh, variables and data set, it's a little bit uh, different. So that's why we have to understand their data structure. And yeah, using that format, we have to utilize and we have to be able to extract this data as time series. So, okay, let me just share my screen quickly and then uh, I'm gonna show you because I have the simulation ready. It took a lot of time and it's still, yeah, uh, some of the model simulation are running in the server machine because the server is uh, pretty busy uh, right now. Other people, they're also running the their own simulation. So, okay, let me just quickly share my screen and see, uh, I think we have the model in my reaper. I'm logging, yeah, I've been logged in and then, okay, so let me just quickly go to my directory and let's see if we can get inside that one. Okay, so I'm inside my directory and let me just find out which one we uh, created in the last tutorial. I think it's kind of a start with, right? Started with test. Let me find it test. Maybe there is another one, 2012. Okay, there is the model and we have this output inside that directory. And see, we have the simulation inside DFM, inside that directory. So all these files you can see, these are the diag right? diagnostic file. If you open it, if there is any, anything wrong, so it will uh, display that message inside that one. But the main important thing here, we have to extract data from this file, right? 0, 0, 0, 0 underscore history dot nc file, netcdf file. This is a netcdf3 format. So we, there is another one, netcdf4, the latest one. It is basically similar to HDF format. Okay, so let's check, right? How to extract data. But before that, you have to know what variables you have inside that one, right? So what is the command? You can you can use uh, this command if you already have that, but I'm not sure because I'm using a shared memory and shared library. So that's why maybe I won't be able to use that because I faced that problem previously. Maybe see it's showing that I'm using that uh, library, shared library, so what I have to do, I have to activate my Python environment on this NCL, right? That uh, NCAR command line language and that can read that file pretty easily. So how can I do that? Yeah, I can activate that on the environment and uh, NCL underscore is stable. And yeah, maybe it's going to activate that environment, it's done. So if I, yeah, okay. So the environment is ready. Now, so what is the command ncl underscore pile dump? If I use pile dump, I'm gonna read that header. 
I'm selecting this file and it will display the header with uh, all these variable descriptions because the, yeah, it has written a lot of the literally many the variables. <laughs> so out of, out of these variables, we'll only extract this water level for the time being and it also stored the time series for wind pressure and every other yeah, depth. So we are gonna extract that time series that is related to our uh, model validation or model calibration process. It has assigned the latitude, longitude, but the main structure here is they're assigning that number as the number of the observation point. So what do you have to do? It is just writing this data as a sequence of that observation station name. See here, by this station name, and then the length of this one. So that is the station double C, Y coordinate of the station, X coordinate of the station, and the variable usually what have, you have to extract the time for time water level C. You have to extract, you have to extract the water level using time and the stations. When you have to pass the name of the station other than the location, because here they already assigned this way because it is sometimes it's pretty difficult to understand. And sometimes it is pretty simple to understand this. We want the value for each of this time step and for the specific station we need will ask, okay, give me the time series for this one. So we have to write this code in a way that will read that variable water level, and then it will make the time series because uh, yeah, we, we want that. And for every other variable see depth, the format is same. And then for a station, so how can we specify that? Okay, you are passing this station and you're extracting that one. That's why you have to have the same name for which, they have written this data, right? So that's why I'm using the same name uh, for which I have written that input file. I already mentioned that one in the previous tutorial, how to generate that input file, right, for observation point. So I'll use that time series, the same time series, so that my station name names are identical to the observation and for those stations for which I'm gonna extract this data as a time series. So let me just uh, quickly go back to the script I have, maybe here it is. Okay, I have to go back to another state and then I have the script here. All See all other scripts are there. So at first I'm gonna extract this uh, discharge. I also have this discharge water level and water depth other, these are the three main important variable we'll extract from this code. So I have a different one for each of this one. So I'm gonna extract this uh, discharge time series first using this script, okay? So what do you have to do? This is for 2012, I made it separately, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just trying to import this uh, libraries required libraries, netcdf4, and here is I have to specify the path of this output directory. So this is, uh, this should be test, okay? Test, it, it, this should be test. I'm assigning this, okay. It will, it will check if this directory exists or it will generate one. So the 2012 discharge TS, and the, that I'm gonna put it as uh, 08 and should be 17. Okay, it's pretty, yeah, the previous one was just uh, one month ago. And then I'm specifying this year, the simulation start time because I already mentioned that one, right? 2012 and 15th of August, we are signing this one. And here's the location of the history file where we have that history file. We have to, specify that one. So where it is, you have to find that one this way, test, will start with T. This one, go inside, mm -hmm. test, and then go inside, and then inside this one, you have this location. So just uh, click and copy, and then you can, because the name is the same, 
So you can copy and replace up to this part. The name is same, it's there. And what do you have to do? You, can, you have to specify the location of the observation, right? So the location of the observation and the observation po po point, these are located one step back. So here it is, the location of this file is really located one step back here. Dflow FM observation, see this file. I'm specifying this file. Basically, it is not, it is basically this file, longitude, latitude, and the station name. So that's why I'm asking that query, okay, give me the station time series for this one, because it stored this data in this sequential form, first, second, third. If you specify this name, it will calculate the index, and then based on that index, it will create that time series. So that's the algorithm. I can tell you. And then, okay, I'm passing that discharge location here. I'm asking, okay, if you wanna extract all of them, I have another code, it will give you the time series for all of them. But if you need any specific point, one, two, or some of them, so then what do you need to do? You have to specify another list. So I have this list, validation station 2012 and USGS. It's under Q, okay, flow rate. So here it is, I'm gonna show you that locations. A validation station 2012 Q and inside that one I have that list. I'm asking, okay, I have the observation for many, but I don't need that just to give me for these stations, okay? I don't need data for each of them, so I only need data for these stations. If I want to open this way using a, like a CSV file, you can understand what it is showing here. See this one, this one, and this one. I need only this one, this one, and this one. That is the site number, right? So it already has that site number as a string, okay? And then what it will give you? It will give you a time series inside that directory right inside that directory and I'm calling, okay, use this index, that index and out of this one, generate the time series, okay? I'm saving this file and it will also plot, At the same time it will also plot, here I am and then that is creeped. Maybe it is a uh, three extraction Q, right, Q extraction discharge, okay, in 2012. If I hit enter, then it will try to extract, okay? Let me just quickly show you what it is uh, doing. Maybe, yeah, it will show you that uh, plot yeah, on different window. So that's why I need to share my separate window as well. See, it started. I, I don't know if you just uh, see that. Maybe uh, started. See, it is. If you <laughs> saw that previously, uh, I'm sharing another window, another monitor, so that you can easily see that it is extracting for that number and is plotting and is showing. Okay, these are the time series. Yeah, maybe hopefully you saw that. So I'm switching again to this window and then we have that, okay? By this name, test 2012, by this name, okay, find that test 2012, this one. I have this time series and let's check what it is giving us. So this one, See, it is giving us this time. At the beginning, there is no, nothing, because it is giving five minute interval. Then it has the flow, because previously, that's why we need the spin up time for this model. Because if you run the model for a long time, then at the very beginning of the storm or very beginning of the simulation time, it will just uh, assume that, okay, my, initial condition is zero. So there is no flow, everything, the land and the soil, it should be dry. 
and then there will be rainfall and it will be wet and then it will cal start calculating and then it will start flowing the runoff and then there will be a flow rate. So see after 15 days and there is a flow and then it started to generate that one, this flow and then see we have this data for up to 15th of September, okay? So that's that. This is how we can even extract data for flow rate. And uh, if I wanna extract data for time series of water level. So let me check, uh, I'm gonna extract this data for a station that has a significant number, not that big. Because if I wanna extract data for high water mark, it will take a lot of time. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you then the comparison plot. So it is high water mark, NOAA station, USGS. So I'm gonna extract, see, for USGS, okay? So let me show you that. This one, so what I have to do, because these files are totally different. So test, I'm specifying again, renaming that one. Test on Bosco 2012 rainfall USGS. Okay. And then to the state. And then what I have to do, I have to specify, I have to change the name. The file is located in different directory. So I have to change the same directory where the history file is located using this one. I have to modify that one. Okay. And from this one, we have to even specify the location of that observation file, right? So it should be this one. And then see the validation stations 2012 and USGS. So let me just definitely show you where it is and what are the files, so validation station 2012 and USGS. I'm expecting data for this one. So out of many, I'm asking, okay, give me the look the time series for these IDs, for these IDs, okay? So it will give me this ID and it will generate by this name, rainfall, TS, USGS, and today's date. I'm gonna save that. So, it is extraction water level, okay? That file, so what is the command for this one? Yeah, extraction, right? Maybe 30 and then extraction water level or extraction what? Uh, extraction, which script? Extraction flow rate 2012, USGS, this one extraction, USGS, okay. And then rainfall, it will, this will give you rainfall, but we need water level. This will give you rainfall, I don't want rainfall, okay. So I have to even modify the script. This is not the right one we are going to extract. We have to extract this one water level, okay this water level test and then this water level TS test simulation water level TS and then this should be your age 17 and this one and we have to modify the history file again I'm copying and testing the history file here same name and then I'm gonna just modify this uh, location as well. Okay, up to this location. So this should be located here up to this points. What I have to do, I have to copy only this part this part because it is there inside that 
yeah everything is set up then i already mentioned that usjs water level and then it will save inside this directory i'm extracting this water level so that's that extraction usgs and it is water level okay and for 2012 so that's the script if i run and now let me just again uh, switch my screen so that you can see what it is giving okay here i'm gonna hit enter and then it will start uh, creating that see it started generating that time series you can see that pretty well so once it will be done, then what we'll do, we'll compare with our observation station because I already uh, downloaded that observation uh, time series from USGS website. And then, yeah, if you have this data ready, these are the pre-processing. I also have another script that can download this data pretty quickly. Otherwise you can click one by one and you can download the time series if, if you wanna download any data for a specific USGS station, you have to go to that uh, yeah, U.S. Geological Survey website, and then you'll search for the station number. It will give you that now specific window, and then you'll specify the starting and ending time. Then you can download this as a text.txt file, and out of this txt file, you have to convert it to CSV file. Then you can compare with this one. So what I have done, I've written a code that can yeah, automatically download that time series as text file, and then another script can convert this text file into this CSV file. So that's, uh, yeah, made my job pretty easy. And then, yeah, this is how I do task. I don't want to do the manual job. It's done. So I'm uh, going to switch my screen again one more time, maybe. Okay, so you can see we already have that inside that test where we have the test, it is there, water level, right? This one, we have this. It generated this one, this water level time series, okay? In terms of meter, here it is. See the time interval is five minute, and it's giving us this data. If I wanna plot, if I wanna plot all of them, so then what will happen? You need to have the observation. These are the simulation test. We have to have the observation, okay? So here it is. Here I have stored the observation for 2012. Let me just quickly check observation 2012. Here it is, observation water level 2012. For the same number of stations I have, see? For the same number of stations. And if I wanna show you that one pretty quickly, then maybe you'll be able to I have an idea. So this number of stations, I'll compare this with this, with this, okay? Starting with 2600 and ending 2282. Keep in mind and check if we have the same number because it is in sequential order, 2600 and 2282, the same number in between these two, that will be same. And then, let me just quickly plot a comparison plot. So then I'll end up with this uh, tutorial series. But yeah, maybe after calculating, yeah, then I can show you how to calculate the validation statistics. So I have another script written in Python as well. So that will calculate the statistics, right? The matrices like RMAC, the MAE, the mean absolute error and the R square and this uh, correlation coefficient and uh, even the nash sutcliffe coefficient of the efficiency. And then it will also calculate the standard deviation of variance and the percentage biases it has. So uh, let me pull out another script that can compare. That will be the water level validation statistics no the validation plot it should be plot validation stat no validation plot 2012 water level usgs validation plot this script will compare so we have to 
assign these two. So already it's there. Now this is for 2016 Y, it should be 2000. Oh, we don't need this starting and ending point. Forget about that one. It is not going to use that. So here it is. I have the observation location. It is already there. And then I have to specify the new location where I have, right, the time series from my simulation I just extracted is in this one. If I just uh, copy this directory name and then if I paste it here, I have this. And then I'm going to store validation plot, water level, USGS 2012 and by today's date, okay? It will save the plots. Every plot it will save. What it is going, it is going to loop through these two directories and it is going to check. It is making a list of the files here and then it is looping through each of this file and it's checking if these file names are same, then it is going to read that file. It's going to read, right? And is making a data frame using the date as index. I specified the first column is the date time. So it is making, okay, the first column is the index. So date time index. And based on that one, it's going to, going to plot. It is going to plot. And then it is going to save this file inside that directory. So that's the idea. If I run this script, it will automatically save and it will show you the comparison plot. And you can see that. Okay. I already have this script ready. Since I already have this scripts, a lot of scripts I've written, and then I made a separate script for separate purpose. So that's the idea. Okay, let me just quickly even pull out that one here. Maybe it's validation, okay, validation plot, validation stat. No, no, it is not the validation stat. It is the water level. WL, water level, and then validation of different name. So that's the problem, okay? Water level USGS, validation plot 2012. And then let me quickly, yeah, switch my window again so that you can see what it is generating and showing you that plot. So if I hit enter, you'll see the comparison plot. If the file names are okay, then you will quickly see that. See, it started for the first one, we don't have that simulation. So that's why we have a big difference. And then if you know, okay, we have this still see this observation is not complete. We have part of the observation, but the model simulation is okay. Still for this point, it's the same. We have observation up to this one, but during the storm, there is no observation. And then here, simulation is the red one and the blue one is the observation, right? So here the model is catching the peak and still we have some datum difference. So we have to correct this datum, right? We have to solve that. So here comes in the calibration processes. So you have to take time. You have to spend a lot of time to uh, correct the bed level it means if there is any blockage on the way of the water, then you have to correct that if there is any necessary correction, like the roughness, roughness is the most sensitive, you have to correct the roughness as well. And then if you have any other issues, like you have to take care of the breezes and then you have to take care of the levees as well. If you're messy here, it's pretty quickly showing. Yeah. And then see, these are the stations where performance is better, but we don't know by only looking at it, okay? You have to calculate, you have to be able to calculate the statistics, then you can make sure, okay, that is the yeah, model performance, I can move forward or I have to modify this parameter or that parameter. For most of the cases, for any uh, hydrodynamic model, what we do, the most sensitive parameter is the roughness, space varying roughness. That's why we use that one using land use information. So we use that. So what do we have to do? We have to change it. And we haven't used the loss factor because we are running this model with uh, rainfall, right? So we haven't used that loss factor because this model doesn't have that loss factor. That's why see the simulation is higher than the observation, always see the red one, it is the simulation. 
So we have to use the loss. There is no loss for the water, but what actually happens if there is any rainfall or precipitation, then when it falls on the ground, then what happens? See, then some of the uh, rainfall, it, it gets lost, right? By either by evapotranspiration or by uh, deep percolation, right? Some of the water, they just uh, flow through the pore spaces of the soil and then uh, they just uh, flow as groundwater flow and contribute to the mainstream. And some of them are part of the uh, precipitation. They just uh, flow directly uh, vertical direction and then they go to the deeper layer of the soil called deep percolation. And some of them, they just uh, evaporate due to the sunlight and uh, radiation, heat radiation, right? The, due to the temperature and other wind effect. So because of this, some of them just uh, get lost. So what will be the effective uh, value of the precipitation that is called effective rainfall or precipitation? So from this effective precipitation, so if you wanna reduce that number, the losses, you have to use a loss factor. Right, this, but this loss factor that varies from time to time. So during the, in the day, during, uh, yeah, in the early morning it will be different, and in the yeah in the middle of the day it will be different, right? And in, at night it will be also different. So you have to be able to take care of this one. But for any modeling, we don't use that uh, seasonal means we don't use that variation day and night and morning and evening we use either a monthly factor or daily factor. That's the different one. So you have to be able to calculate that statistics. So, okay, let me just show you how to even calculate that statistics. For calculating that statistics, you need to have the data, right, in the same format, because it will calculate the RMAC, MAC, and MAE, everything, but you need to have the same length in terms of time interval because my observation, let, let me just show you what is the time interval for, for the observation. So I have the observation because I have different uh, sources of observations, right? So I have different interval. For uh, flow rate, I have 30 minute interval and for water level, see, for water level, I have 15, 15 minutes. So that's why your simulation data should be in the same order, but See, it, it is uh, one hour, not 15, uh, 15 minutes. It is one hour we downloaded for this one, it is one hour. So my data should be in the same time interval and the starting time and ending time should be same. Then the number of data will be the same. Then what it will do, it will even make difference between these two and then it will calculate, okay? So let me just quickly convert from minute to hourly series. I also have another script that can convert that one. So if you have that, it takes, yeah, it took a lot of time to write all this thing. I spent a lot of time to prepare, then now it's happening pretty quickly within a minute, right? But it took days after days to write and test the scripts and understanding the data structure. So this is a new level of learning. You can do that. So let me just find how to convert that one. How to convert that one and, and if you wanna plot, okay, just let me quickly show you another plot using this script. This script will plot the precipitation on the top, and then it will even compare the discharge, means the hydrograph, okay? So if I wanna run that one, this is from the previous data set, so you'll have idea because you have to do all of them. And then, yeah, I'm again switching my screen this way you'll see that what it is giving us it will give you so sometimes you need to plot this way your precipitation series will be on the top oh man okay wait 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 so it is not happening maybe i have different uh station time series it is not here it is from previous Hmm. Change the location pretty quickly. It will be this one. Wait. 
because I changed this files from my home directory to this directory. So that's the problem because we were out of the forest. And then, okay, I'm gonna change this to, maybe this is gonna happen now. You didn't see that, but no problem. You can see the plot if it works. Maybe it is still it is not gonna work. Let me quickly show you what I'm doing basically here. So I need to specify the directories to plot. So that is the directory where I oh I have written twice. And uh, then yeah same thing for this one as well I have to remove this one i repeated that name of the directory okay so i have specified the precipitation time series and the simulation and i have the usgs so i'm going to show you only that type of plot right sometimes you need to plot this way let me <laughs> show you this time if it's gonna happen Maybe, yeah, it's plotting. Okay, let's see, it is combining them together and, and it's trying to show you this way. See, precipitation at the top, and you can see where you have the rainfall, and then you have the storm, and then you have the peak flow rate or discharge. See the peak here, the peak is here, right? And then you have huge amount of precipitation. So this is kind of plot you need, sometimes for publication purpose or for any representation. So all of this hard logic. So this is the no, observation observation is very low compared to this simulation simulation is pretty high because we haven't used the loss factor because our precipitation all of the precipitation they are just uh, making that runoff and it is contributing to the stream and flowing as uh, stream flow or river flow so that's so we have to take care of that one so this is the way to compare the observation with the simulation and then if there is any discrepancy and definitely we have, so you have to take care of that. This is called calibration. So while calibrating our model, we have to fix the model parameter to match this uh, simulation with the observation. So I'm done with that one. So that was the thing I was uh, trying to show you. And next, the next thing I'm gonna show you that how to calculate that validation statistics or matrix, right? And here is the code. Using that one, I can even, yeah, Del 3D, 0.5 wind sensor. I have one that can convert, that can convert from five minute to hourly series. Let me quickly check that because I have a lot of scripts here that can convert this 30 minute, 30 minute and even hourly series. I already converted that one. I already converted that one using uh, these scripts. So here it is. Yeah, I have this any script because I don't want to change the name of the directory again. So that's why I was looking for the specific one. I'm a separate one. So here, right? That can even change. This script can change from five minute to yeah it will read all these directories and then it will convert to the time time series that we need but for this one here it is if you have the same time interval okay i'm not gonna show you that uh, yeah if you have the same time interval like hourly then we can compute that. I'm going to show you that one if you have the same time interval. Anyhow, you can even use Excel like a pivot table to convert from hourly to daily and from daily to hourly or from five minute to one hour mean. Because for flow rate, we have to calculate the mean, right? But for precipitation, you have to sum them up. So that's the difference you have to keep in mind. Now let me just uh, calculate the validation statistics, validation statistics for NOAA station, okay, NOAA 2012, for this one. 
I'm going to calculate the validation station. So I have this data, no observation data set here. And then what I have, I have that stations here and I'm going to save this by today's date. See, it will be validation instead, water level noir, del 3 dfm 2012 and 08 and 17. And then you'll see what it will generate. So this is script, okay. I can copy the name of the script so that I can generate here. So that's that. But first I'm gonna show you the processing it is doing here and then I'll show what it is plotting at the same time. It will plot at the same time, it will show you the plot and then it will show you the calculation as well. So let me just hit enter and then let's see what calculation it is doing, see? It is just a reading from that file and it is showing the time series. It is plotting on the other window. I'll show you, I'll run it again, and then I'll switch to that window and you'll see what it is generating. It is comparing that comparison plot is pretty impressive. I'll show that and see it is calculating. It is looping through each of these directories I already have because these time series the same. And see it is showing us, showing us the, strict M, the statistics, MAE mean absolute error for this station. Because for NOAA station, I have only three. That's why it is giving me three for three stations and MSE calculating an RMSE. These are in meter and R square. We know that's the correlation of determination for any model. So you see 0 0.95 and 0 0.95. And for this, it is not that good for three. And it is all giving me R, it is the Pearson correlation. And then NSE, it is also too high. And then it's P bias for this. It is has zero and it is minus 17, right? The model is underestimating the flow still. And then I also have the standard deviation and the sample simulation, every variance and then reference variance. And let me quickly run it again. And then, yeah, I'm sharing other screen, what it is actually doing to that window. If I quickly run the same script, I'm running the same one. And then yeah, you'll see that uh, plots that's why i'm just sharing see it's showing this plot and it's calculating that one the window you just saw and then i'll show you that it is even writing all these values in a csv format it is giving me that output as well okay it's done it's done so it is giving me a csv file where by today's date and let me check you that and let me show you that one so it should be a val, right? It should be val uh, validation statistics and by today's state zero, it should be eight, zero, eight. Where is the zero at this one? See the date time for today's date, file generation time is this one. And if I open, yeah, it's giving me that plot as well. I'm saving the plot. So that's the plot I'm saving. And here I'm saving the plots here and three. I have three, and then I'm writing this statistics as CSV file because I need that ultimately, right? That is the display, it is displaying and printing, but here I have all of them here. You can see it is in a sequential order. So for doing this, you had to write some specific code that can generate this one. Yeah, you can do that. Everything you can do there. So what I have uh, already, I demonstrated here in this tutorial from the beginning to this tutorial series. Maybe this is the last one I can do. Then I'll start another series uh, on the Holland wind model because that wind model is very important for any uh, storm surge modeling. Okay. So what we have done so far, we described what are the objectives of this tutorial. Then we started uh, generating the input files. And uh, then we already demonstrated how to create the mesh, right? Mesh generation is the main part of this uh, tutorial and it takes a lot of time. I did most of the processes outside of this uh, video series. And that's why it took a uh, time, but you can't even imagine that how much time I spent on that. And then I tested that uh, mesh, if it works really or not, and then it's working. So finally we run the model on both on Windows machine and in a Linux cluster as a parallel simulation, right? And it took like more than one day with the 32 uh, processor, but I demonstrated here uh, with 10 processor because at that time 
I had that number of processor free in that Linux server. So that's that. And then uh, today I demonstrated how to extract this time series from the simulation. If you have any code in Python or MATLAB that can do the job for you. And then I already demonstrated, right? Just a few minutes ago, how to compare this observation with the simulation time series. And then finally I demonstrated how to calculate that uh, validation or calibration and statistics or the matrices that we need to test the model performance. So this is how you can, you can, you can easily uh, calculate. And then if you are not satisfied with the model performance, because we know the model performance is acceptable if the R value is more than 0 0.6, but here the R is 0 0.97. That means for some stations, uh, especially for 2012 and at the downstream, uh, the model performance is pretty good because this is uh, located uh, on the ocean. All right, so when you are just moving forward to the land and close to the shore, then the performance is getting better related. So that's why you have to change some parameter. That is the research we are doing here. We're just trying to combine, trying to couple a hydrologic part of the module and then hydrodynamic if the performance is better. So the model has to be able to capture all these processes, all these coastal processes, including this hydrologic processes with this hydrodynamic processes, right? And we are gonna use all these flood drivers to test the compounding effect of any storm surge, right? So that's the main idea. So I'm gonna finish here. If you have any comment or any suggestion, you can put it in the comment box and then I'll let you know if you have any problem or yeah, I'll learn new things. See, every day I'm showing and then I'm having a little bit of problem with different things, then I'm quickly yeah, understanding what is going on, then I'm trying to solve it. So this is how we can solve your own problem or you can search uh, for the solution. Yeah, there are a lot of information, including scripting, including programming, or if, yeah, you'll find less tutorial on the L3D model. So that's why that is my idea. Yeah, if some other people may be benefited from this uh, tutorial series, so then yeah, that's why I'm sharing my knowledge I have. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to do that. So that's that, okay, I don't wanna kill your uh, time anymore. And uh, thank you for watching. And if you don't cover the whole tutor, uh, yeah, the whole series, then you won't understand. So if you really work on this one, then you can focus one by one and you can uh, see. If you just saw this one and uh, yeah, if you didn't see the previous tutorial, so then, then may, you may not be, uh, going to understand the whole processes because I'm not going to sh uh, show you here all the minute details, right? All the subtle uh, things. Uh, I'm excluding that one. You can find every details in the manual. You have to read that and you have to try by yourself and then you'll face that, okay, I need this one. So how can I do that? You have to think about that one and then you'll be able to do that. So that's the way. Uh, you can move forward, uh, but the most important thing that you have to work hard and then you can nail it. So that's the idea. Without the working hard, you can't find anything. If you struggle, then you can learn. If you won't struggle, you won't be able to do anything, right? So, okay, thank you very much uh, for watching this tutorial series and let me know, okay, bye.